Evolution is based on the idea of fitness, meaning the ability to survive and reproduce in a specific environment. It unfolds within an adaptive landscape similar to an optimization problem, where variation introduces diversity and selection gradually removes weaker solutions while favoring traits that enhance survival. Although evolution has no fixed objective, its outcomes often appear purposeful and well-directed. Organisms continuously anticipate changes in their surroundings, and successful prediction leads to reduced surprise and greater stability. Fitness is shaped not only by environmental conditions, but also by genetic relationships between traits and by interactions with other organisms, such as mimicry, which can provide temporary advantages in certain contexts. In dynamic and learning systems, objective functions become more complex and less predictable. Evolutionary algorithms capture this process by exploring solution spaces through variation and selection. Poor choices in representation or operator design can lead to premature convergence, limiting diversity and performance. This challenge often requires modifying representations, adjusting variation operators, or refining selection methods. The introduction of real-valued representations revealed that mutation can be more effective than crossover in many cases. To remain effective across different stages of search, evolutionary algorithms often rely on self-adaptation, allowing parameters and operators to evolve over time and improve exploration of the solution space. The human brain is composed of a vast, highly interconnected network of neurons that enable reading, breathing, movement, and thought. Each biological neuron has a level of complexity comparable to a microprocessor, making the brain a powerful nonlinear and parallel computing system. Through its ability to organize neurons structurally, the brain can perform certain computations far more efficiently than even the fastest digital computers. Neurons are highly connected elements, each linking to many others. A biological neuron consists of three main parts, dendrites, a cell body, and an axon. Dendrites form branching networks that receive electrical signals and carry them into the cell body. The cell body integrates these incoming signals and determines whether to activate. The axon then transmits the resulting signal to other neurons. Communication between neurons occurs at synapses which are contact points between the axon of one neuron and the dendrite of another. The overall function of a neural network depends on both the arrangement of neurons and the strength of their synaptic connections, which are shaped by complex chemical processes. Research has shown that biological neural functions, including memory, are encoded in neurons and their connections. Learning occurs through the creation of new connections or the modification of existing ones. Although our understanding of biological neural networks remains limited, it is possible to construct simplified artificial neurons and train them to perform useful tasks. This idea forms the foundation of artificial neural networks, which are inspired by the brain's fundamentally different approach to computation compared to traditional digital computers. The history of neural networks has progressed in an uneven and complex manner. Early foundations were laid in the late 19th and early 20th centuries through interdisciplinary research by scientists from multiple fields. The modern view of neural networks emerged in the 1940s when Warren McCulloch and Walter Pitts demonstrated that artificial neurons could, in theory, compute any arithmetic or logical function. Their work is widely regarded as the starting point of the neural network field. Practical implementation began in the late 1950s with the development of the perceptron and its learning algorithm, which generated significant enthusiasm. However, it soon became clear that the basic perceptron could solve only a limited class of problems. In response, researchers introduced new learning methods for adaptable linear neural networks, some of which remain in use today. Interest in neural networks declined in the late 1960s due to limited computational power and a shortage of new ideas. This situation changed in the 1980s as advances in computing technology and the introduction of several key concepts revived the field. Two developments 
were especially influential. The use of statistical mechanics to explain the behavior of certain recurrent networks capable of associative memory and the creation of the backpropagation algorithm, which enabled effective training of multilayer networks. Today, neural networks are widely applied and continue to evolve through both theoretical and practical innovation. Their strength lies in their parallel distributed structure and their ability to learn and generalize. However, they do not function effectively in isolation and must be integrated into a broader systems engineering framework where complex problems are divided into simpler tasks and neural networks are applied where their capabilities are most effective. Artificial neural networks, commonly referred to as neural networks, are a technology with roots in many disciplines, including neurology, mathematics, statistics, physics, computer science, and engineering. They are designed as massively parallel distributed systems that mimic certain aspects of biological information processing. One of their most important properties is the ability to learn from data and to generalize, meaning they can produce appropriate outputs for inputs that were not encountered during training. Because of this learning and generalization capability, neural networks are applied to a wide range of problems such as modeling complex systems, time series analysis, pattern recognition, signal processing, and control applications. At the core of every neural network is the artificial neuron, which acts as the basic information processing unit. By combining many such neurons and organizing them into structured networks, neural systems are constructed that can solve complex and nonlinear tasks efficiently. This subsection focuses on the Delta Rule, a supervised learning method used to train single layer perceptrons. The Delta Rule works by iteratively adjusting the weights and biases of the network to minimize the difference between predicted and actual outputs. Its principles can also be extended to multi layer perceptrons, influencing training efficiency and the overall learning process. A critical factor in applying the Delta Rule is the learning rate, which determines the size of weight updates. The choice of learning rate directly affects the speed of convergence and the stability of learning, with rates that are too high causing instability and rates that are too low slowing progress. The Delta Rule has been applied in various real-world domains including image recognition and natural language processing, where it helps networks learn patterns and relationships from complex data sets. When compared with other learning algorithms, such as gradient descent and backpropagation, the Delta Rule offers a simpler approach for single-layer networks, but may be less effective for deeper, multi-layer architectures. Common challenges in using the Delta Rule include overfitting, where the network becomes too closely tuned to training data, and underfitting, where it fails to capture underlying patterns. Addressing these challenges often involves techniques such as regularization, proper selection of learning rates, and careful design of network architecture to balance learning and generalization. This subsection covers several important aspects of neural network training and learning algorithms. It begins with the criteria that ensure the perceptron training algorithm converges, meaning it will ultimately find a set of weights capable of correctly classifying the input data. Understanding these criteria is essential for guaranteeing reliable learning in single-layer networks. The discussion also addresses overfitting and underfitting, explaining their causes and symptoms. Overfitting occurs when a model learns the training data too closely, capturing noise rather than general patterns, while underfitting happens when a model fails to capture the underlying structure of the data.
Strategies to mitigate these issues are crucial for building robust models. Gradient descent is described as a foundational optimization method, highlighting its advantages over the delta rule, particularly in handling multilayer networks. Building on this, the backpropagation algorithm is introduced, emphasizing its central role in efficiently training neural networks by propagating errors backward to adjust weights. Alternative learning algorithms are also discussed, including support vector machines and decision trees, which address certain limitations of the delta rule and offer complementary approaches to classification and regression problems. Finally, real-world examples illustrate how image recognition systems successfully overcome challenges related to overfitting and underfitting, demonstrating the practical effectiveness of these learning strategies.